All right. Oh, the last bit of this chapter. Let's do this. Like, look, I know you want to. Like, I know you want to join, but uh, like, I know you want to help out, Shinon. I can't have that. Not this time around. We're not put. It's like no more. I need. There is barely any color difference between Valiant and all around. They should really fix that. <clears throat> Observation! You are all safe! I am... relieved! I was concerned about your status. Looks like we both had a rough ride. Looks like we both had a rough ride. I'm sorry I got you involved. Worrying about me is illogical. I am a disposable unit. My directives prioritize my objectives over self-preservation. Oh. Don't talk about yourself like that. You're not disposable to me. You've got to look after yourself. Argument. Your criticisms are irrational. They have no logical basis. Dude, I don't need logical basis at this point. <laughs> oh, dear. oh dear. I think you've made an enemy. I've never seen you get so sulky before, R19. Sulky? I was sulky? You were indeed. Perhaps you were not aware. In that respect, you are in good company. Only a blessed few are not blind to their own emotions. It is only when we find another who reflects us like a mirror that we finally begin to understand. <sighs> yeah. Analysis failed. I do not comprehend. I request additional explanation. Hmm. I fear these questions are beyond my power to answer. You must find the answers on your own. That is all the guidance I can give you. <laughs> and then we then back to our interruption.
<clears throat> Train, fight, and let the winner off. Let the winner offer themselves as a sacrifice to the gods. Oh God, yeah. I demonstrated my ideals through example. This is why I thrust myself into the fight without a thought to disappearing. Even now, I, Tezcatlipoca, do not regret my decision. I love this world. It contained all the proof that I had lived. I believed from the bottom of my heart that I loved El Dorado more than anything. So I hesitated not in my choice to continue fighting. For the sake of this world, I would have done anything. To me, never-ending wars were entirely normal. Until the day you disappeared from the world. I had never imagined a world without you in it, my other half. I never once stopped to think such a thing might happen disappeared and the only trace of you left was the world itself which you left me and all I had ever wanted was to live out eternity in that world the one with you in it I wasn't even able to ask why you left me and I thought my heart had already been lost until I felt an icy cold wind blow through it At that time, I could not understand the reason behind it. Surely I was devastated by your self-sacrifice. Commander, though it pains me greatly, I have come to request your blessing. I wish to be dismissed from service where I found a home to return to. It need not pain you. You may do as you please. I have always been of the mind that there is no use in retaining a soldier who lacks morale. No, that is not what I meant to say. Zalato, their once shirt to call to sacrifice himself. Much like you have. My dear other half, Quezacato, allowed him to leave our world of El Dorado back then. And because of that act, I will allow you to leave my side now. Follow the path laid out by Quetzalcoatl's deeds, and all that my other half has done, I too will do. In doing so, I will remember everything, and then I will begin it all over again. An endlessly repeating loop in a wor world of endless war. Such is my greatest ambition, my truest desire. Understand that this is why I approve your dismissal. I do get it. Understood, Commander. I would expect no less from our noble leader, our soul Radiante. Tez Calipoca, please. One day I'm gonna, one day, assuming I, I live that long, I'm gonna get comments talking about how I butchered the Spanish language. Uh-oh. We'll make
Breakers and Invaders are here. <laughs> and the load? Scary. Don't do that. So, this place will end soon, too. <sighs> Task Catlapoca is done for. <sighs> How sad to see a world representative meet such a pitiful end. Why is no one capable of preserving harmony? Perhaps for him, it is merely redress for his mistakes. So the attack on Penitentia Academy has been approved, then. I hear the warmongers had the Guildmaster hold a vault. Yes, Michael is currently defying the treaty and bringing angel troops to the Academy to confirm this. So you say this is the result of a majority vote of the West? Or rather, the world representatives. Meaning you've chosen to destroy the world representative of El Dorado? Yes, Bale. Though it pains me to admit it. We of the East, as well as those of the South, have chosen to acquiesce to the West, acquiesce to the West decision. Huh, I see. So the crime of breaking out tre breaking out treaties and causing mutual distrust between the three true guilds was that severe, eh? Indeed. I am sure Tezcatlipoca will be the first to be removed by the world representatives in many weeks to come. <laughs> Did you just speak of loops to come? You all think the same. You believe that your world and yours alone will continue for all eternity. But you know, Hamatarasu, all worlds end at some point. That ain't Bale speaking, that is Ball. <laughs> this I know better than most. <laughs> I guess we're back to the I guess we're back to the main event. Hear me, my soldiers, my beloved servants of war. Set aflame your flesh. Set aflame your flesh to light our world. Let your Bright, burn bright! <sighs> I can't see like this. Is everyone all right? What's going on? Okay, Ashigar, you can stop making that face now. We got enemies inbound, and whoever they are, they're used to killing. I can smell it on them. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, and cinco! In your eyes. Oh no. C come on. <laughs> oh my god, you're having me dig out Spanish with one. God. <coughs> <coughs> oh. 
Kenta eating the laws. Fortez Kamapoka's honor guard is here to out. Oh my god. This wasn't even in Spanish. <laughs> to Allegra Sue's Su Corazons. Onward, warriors of El Dorado. Show them the strength of our Gucha Libre. Everyone, where are they? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my team, right? <laughs> nice work, amigo. But how about this? Not this again. With the sky, flames my heart. Burn stronger, climb higher. Crouching Tiger! Leaping Jaguar! <laughs> I can't sense him! Where's he gonna come from? Get up, amigo! The fight has only begun! Why won't you finish me off? Why would I kill you? I'm a luchador! In Lucha Libre, there's no point if the audience isn't having fun. All I want is the fight to be enjoyable! Enjoyable? Oh, God, I don't see anyone having fun here! Don't push me. Stop! Y'all gotta stop. <laughs> We're at the serious moment here. Yeah. Hey, amigo. Haven't you ever wanted to be just like the Super Australia who protects the world? Our Super Australia is called to action when the world is in crisis. To sacrifice himself for the greater good. Solitary, noble, and strong. Shining with all his might, never showing an ounce of anger or contempt. I wanted to be like him. It wasn't a dream someone had forced on me. I wanted it for myself. I thought I could stand beside him. I thought I could feel that aching loneliness. Turned out to be impossible for me. But at the very least, I wanted to fulfill his desires. So I will burn this body to ash upon the battlefield. I'll show him how bright my flame can shine! Stop! Will you stop with, the, with choice three? Tigre. You. Yeah. I dedicated my heart to him. I have no regrets. If you were to wish it, I would devote the rest of my body to him as well. Slow it down. Your body's your own property. You battle crazy buffoon. Ugh. 
Are you all right, Brain? No. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> that sword of yours shines like a beacon. I can find it anywhere. More importantly, that arm of yours looks paralyzed. Can you move it? Shinog, I need your help. <laughs> I need a painkiller. <laughs> and a bit of affection. Good choice, dude. Yeah. <sighs> what is it with all my patience? Okay, fine. But after this, you're getting a real ear. Count on it. You better be ready. Come on, now. hold out your arm. Bring it, Ombre Tigre. Let's do this! Oh, you're not a champion. Kakuro. Got tied up! Kakuro. No, me claw! Kakuro. Got tied up! I have a control! Oh, I ain't got a number of tied up! Kaku, 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 I have a control. Oh, hi. Engo, tell him he's tied up. Kakuro. 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 Orochi wo susame. Kakuro. Orochi wo susame. Shinzo ga. Ike. Yamero. Oh, how I wish you guys were lined up in a straight line. But no matter. I have a control! Oh, hi! Engo, tell him he's Got tied up! Kakuro! Kakuro! Orochi wo susame! Nomi komu ga ii! Ike! Control! 
後輩援護を頼むぞ合体隠れろ隠れろ太陽がサッチを巡り来るよう我が身は幾度も生まれ直すべし体内回帰アマルティーベールうわっはっはー飲み込むぞよ。仲直りの握手しよう。Hold up, fast and strong, and my heartbeat will reach the sun. May this battle at least create a diversion from his loneliness. Sever the darkness, sever this land, boundless tale! <laughs> Impossible! Maybe I shouldn't wait. Impossible! No, no, I'm not. V, Golden, no doubt he waits for you. <laughs> I know you're there, Yasuyori. Come on out. Dr. Shinong. Remember how you owe me for those sleeping meds? Well, I'm calling in the favor. You would ask me to turn on my commander? I fear I swore him my loyalty. That's not what I'm asking. I figured we'd grant that masochist wish. To do that, I'll need your help. And your rule. My rule? Quasicado, so you have come, my other half. I'm here, Tess Galifoco. No, I'm Brandon. I'm not Quasicado. I'm sure that's how it feels to you. To me, however, you are my precious other half. I'm getting real sick of this mistaken identity bit mess. I know about the whole souls thing. God, it's getting annoying. That sparkle in your eyes, the way you dash to stop an endless war. I've seen it all before. Quasicado is within you. I see my other half inside you. Let us enjoy a moment's respite, drinking in this beautiful sight below us. Just look at them, hurling themselves into harm's way for the sake of a, the world that we so desire. Doesn't the sight make you feel alive? <laughs> How priceless to see life go up in flames. <laughs> My aim was to provoke you, and yet you still refuse to come at me with your sword. 
you defeat me, you may be able to meet that teacher you've been searching for. I want to talk. I won't just kill you. I see you've learned. I approve. It's proof that you're alive. What you would call my true form exists within a network of countless mirrors. Should you attack me, I could use that network to escape as many times as I pleased. Even if you were to strike me down here where I stand, nothing would come of it. <laughs> Though I suppose I'm not the only one who could say such things. All world representatives are the same. Though I would not know how you feel on the matter. In the war, in the war ravaging this Tokyo, death means nothing for world representatives. As foolish as they might be, none are so weak as to be separated from their will by something like death. Unless we are separated from our will to fight, this will never end. So let's have a little chat, if you would. Uh, chat? About what? Dude, we just said we wanted to talk. Come on. Why are you searching for that man? The one you call your teacher. Man, you mean Mr. Mononobe? Yeah. I have spoken with that man at length. I have surmised a few things about you from my observations so far. Had he left without telling you anything, he left you behind. Am I correct? I'll be frank. Do you not feel that man abandoned you? Do you not feel that in the end he cared nothing for you? I, I don't know. You crack, you cracked the whip on your already exhausted body straining to catch up with him, and yet there's no meaning in your following him. That man had no need of this world's interpretation of eternity. I thought such a thing would be obvious, and I wonder how you truly feel. <sighs> Even if that's true, I don't care. I think you're wrong. I want to hear him out. I follow him because I want to. Your idiocy truly knows no bounds. You remind me of a pathetic, foolish dog in search of its master. Too simple to realize that it has been abandoned.
I was born into a battle for my world creation, and my life has been a battle for its survival. It wasn't because I believed I could only live fighting, it was because that's the way things had always been. Fighting was my life, my very existence centered around war. I wanted to share with everyone that ecstasy. That joy of irreversible sacrifice. And what better way than an all-consuming war. Uncontrolled and uncontrollable. Where none are safe from irreversible loss. I do not know any other way of living. This is why you objected to sacrifice. When I won our final battle, and you disappeared from this world for eternity, in a daze, I had no idea what to do. You who are no longer here, you who were once my other half, what in the world were you thinking? Why did you abandon our world? Why did you abandon me? Instead, you tore down the very palace you had created to the point where it could not be rebuilt. The only evidence that you had lived gone from El Dorado we had created. Why? Did you think there was something more important than us? To us? <laughs> Did you think there was something more important to us than our world? I knew nothing, and yet I wished. I chose to continue the battle of that fateful day. It was then that the rainbow of transient light appeared above me, and my soul was transported to this Tokyo. Ignorant all the while of the contradiction in what I wished for. <laughs> it was after I left El Dorado, but... Apparently, Quetzalcoatl erased all traces of himself from El Dorado and left. Tezcatlipoca was born into a world of El Dorado's creation. He knows nothing but war. War is the only way he knows how to interact with his surroundings. He has never felt anger or resentment toward anyone. Never has he waged war against anyone out of fury or spite. If he ever comes to feel those emotions for anyone, it would be directed toward himself, toward his own face in the mirror. At that moment, I am sure he will finally realize his own hypocrisy. Overwhelmed with grief at the thought of his own shine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was about to read the part that was actual narration. <laughs> Pitiful! You think you can defeat me with an attack like that? You dare believe you can hold your own against me, world representative! Of El Dorado! <laughs> Is that all you have? Not again! Didn't I tell you? I'm a network of spider threads. Even if one mirror is broken, I can reflect myself somewhere else. I can reflect myself somewhere else. I was 
I am in the embodiment of an endless war. A servant of war. Call out to- <coughs> God, voice crack. Crack. Oh, God. <clears throat> Call out to our God. For we are his slaves. We are, all of us, slaves of war. If you can't tell, I am losing my voice because Tez Galapopo's energy is very, very freaking high. At least that's what I'm trying to project. God! <coughs> mm. <coughs> yeah. Memories of war burn away at the joys of life. Dark reflection! <laughs> Oh great, he has lasers now! <laughs> God. What is wrong by the hat? Where have your fangs gone? What if that power which you called the double dragon? Want me to use it? I think I understand. You can only use that move at your full power at once. That's because it opens up an exception territory within your own body. Had I not deactivated the system in Eldorado in time, you would have collapsed from your injuries, and our final battle would remain a distant dream. You figured that out? I imagine back then, you lent that arm of yours to someone else. Then, the rules of your world and that individual's world crash together between the two of you. The collision of two rules yet to be ranked in a hierarchy caused a reaction that overpowered the app's restrictions. <sighs> that is nothing exceptional as far as predetermined hierarchy rules is concerned. However, as I'm sure you know, a rule in chaos causes unbearable pain leading to the destruction of body and mind. You mean just like... Oh. Yeah... You can only stand and attack like that once. You can never catch hold of someone like me. However, I won't go easy on you. We have always fought until we had nothing left to give. Oh crap, here it comes again. Let's see if you can avoid me this time. Dark Reflection! There's too many! I'm done for! <laughs> Appear in all your power, Yoxus off! For our desires are as one! <laughs> Grab on! We're getting out of here! <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Are you alright, Brandon? Cheer up! You're not the only one who can pull off crazy stunts. Someone's got to watch your back. Mm. 
this is it. This is Tez Calipocas altar. You ready, Yasiori? I would ask if something you first should offer. Are you doing this out of hatred for Tez Calipocas? I certainly didn't like him as a commander. Damn fool wouldn't hesitate to harm himself. But you know, I bet that was just because deep down, he hated himself. I don't think he realized the inconsistencies of his actions. The war to end all wars, where everyone fights to their last breath and no one wins. That is what Tez Kalapoka said he wanted. But he not only let Jacob, he not only let Jacob be, but he also welcomed him in spite of knowing he had the power to resurrect memories. Not to mention, he told me that all he wished for was to follow the friend who had left him. He is doing all of this with the understanding of what that means then. He's doing nothing but contradicting himself. Commander, now I shall return to you what you gave me that day. Petals flutter and leaves fall! Life is so very fleeting! Blade of falling leaves! The sky! Happening. Brandy. <sighs> That's where Taz Galapoka is. I think I understand. My sword will guide away. Yeah. Let's do this, Shiro. Time to finish this! Oh, 
ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。ドロ。
Don't worry. Leave the aiming to me, Brandon. Open! Ultimate! <coughs> Ultimate gate! All right, double dragon, no! Cosmic dragon! I've lost. I've lost. That is what it would mean to follow Quesicotl's path. Perhaps my other half has felt... Perhaps my other half felt this very same sorrow. Perhaps he had grieved for me as I made all those irreversible sacrifices. Did he mean to teach me a lesson through his own irreversible sacrifice? Or perhaps it was just revenge. <laughs> he always did have a surprisingly short temper. Truly do remind me of my other half, Brandon. Hmm. It appears I've lost something that can't be recovered. Inherited the shining light of my friend who is gone from this land of Eldorado. You are going somewhere we cannot follow, are you not? You are leaving this land to find what lies beyond our past failures. How nice that seems! I wonder why. <laughs>
damn it. I can't grow to hate him either. I can't hate I can't hate Tez Kapapoka like everybody else does. will do. Let us, let us down here. Understood, Curry. Hmm. Looks like we made it in time, Curry. Yes, it does do, do well. We should activate our devices. Agreed. Both of us have weak bodies, so we're not suited to battle in dangerous places like this. Yes, that's why we had these devices made to help us gather data. Well, we'd better hurry it up. Yes, it's almost time for Penitentiary Academy to fall after all. What the? Everyone, look at the screens! We're being bombed? We are under attack, it seems. It will not be long before Penitentia falls. Tezcatlipoca! That! Yes! Those are part of the Warmonger's forces. Machine Trooper is manufactured for war. As none of our seven world representatives are willing to give any ground, they employ a system of majority rule to make final decisions. Guild masters of the three true guilds are that system. These machine troopers are manufactured to, and controlled by one of them. In other words, at least four of the seven warmongers have decided on the destruction of Penitentia Academy. That reminds me, the way the Rapun that reminds me of the way Rapunky Tycoons are structured. World representatives are made up of those who refuse to cede their positions as ca the capstone of their world. In which case, in order to force this game to have guilds, guild masters are necessary. But why are they attacking? You're all still here! Aren't you warmongers too? Well, we broke the treaties between world representatives. So, they have decided to remove us! I suppose this is the result! <laughs> Treaties, you said. Yes, the world representatives have established a series of treaties to ensure that they, and only they, can win this game. One of them states that until transients and app users make up more than half of the population of Tokyo, we are forbidden from interfering with the trophy directly. I see. So that's why all of the three true guilds have tried to steer clear of Brandon. Those who hold the memories of previous loops dislike the degree of randomness involved in dealing with those who don't. Thus, the world representatives have sought to construct a fair game by eliminating random variables with each loop. By fair game, of course, I mean... A game in which the strong will inevitably defeat the weak. 
Ugh, what absurdity! How could such a one-sided massacre masquerade my beloved detested war? War where you lost that which cannot be returned. War which by its essence must be glorious and loathsome. In a true war, no one is assured of victory or defeat. Even you are no exception, Brandon. What do you mean? Hmm. <laughs> I can almost see the tears falling from the eyes of those who turn to turn war to farce. Should there be another loop? I'm sure they will come to destroy us before Surtur or the other conspirators. I'm sure this little incident has labeled us the most threatening of world representatives. Hmm. However, there will be no such loop. At least, not for me. Tezcalapoca! I saw Radiate! His body? It's disappearing! Grieve not for me, my soldiers. Every wish I brought to this Tokyo has been granted. War is an endless loop of retaliation. Counterattack after stinging counterattack in continuous repetition. Repetition. God! I think of it in that way. My sibling's final blow was indeed the best and worst he could have struck. Though, if I should tell the truth, I doubt I truly realized the pain of it until just recently. It was that pain that lost me to battle this time, Brown. How brilliantly you shine, my friend! My other half! To battle you is always the utmost pleasure! Yasuyori Komugo Inuta! I must thank you for your obedience. Tezcatlipoca, are you sure you are satisfied with this? You are to me, as the lotto is to Quezacato. And showing me the strength to seek out what lies beyond this world of self-sacrifice. You held up a mirror that allowed me to see my own desires. I had hoped to grapple forevermore with my sibling Quezacato, and an endless cycle of victory and defeat. But instead, today I find myself claiming both defeat and victory! Tezcatlipoca. Were you and Quezacato? Now then, you should all keep moving. Even deeper within these headquarters, you will find a solitary confinement unit. The man you call teacher is there. You have very little time remaining, my other half. Be sure not to idle it away. Tuskatlipoka.
Oh, Tez Calipoca! My soul radiante! My Super Australia! Please allow me to educate those who have come to attack Benetinji Academy in our form of war! Yes! Yes, educate them brilliantly! My beloved heroes of El Dorado! These novices of war believe they will face no resistance from us! Teach them the splendor and ferocity with which we make war! <laughs> Senor, sweet senor! Wait, isn't that... <laughs> what? S something's flowing into me. What the? Sinar Azathoth and now Tezcat Lapoka. This is the third set of memories Prank has collected. Who are you? Why, how rude. You should really show respect to one of your manufacturers. Eh, to one of your manufacturers. I'm essentially your parent. My manufacturer? You mean... You made me. To be more specific, I'm in charge of the one of the three personalities that lie within you. You were created as a joint effort by the three guildmasters of a collective known as the Three True Guilds. <laughs> so, I really am a machine. A robot you created. Personally, I don't think that should come as much of a shock. There's no significant difference between your creation and an animal being born from the womb. In fact, my siblings and I are also beings created from test tubes as part of an experiment. got a bunch of questions, but there are two things I gotta ask you first. Why did you create me? Why have you abandoned me until now? I'll answer your second question first. You are incorrect. We did not abandon you. I'm quite sure you don't remember this, but you erased all traces of yourself and ran away of your own volition. You ran away from your original home, just like Brandon. Wait, what? I don't remember that part! <laughs> the hell are you on about? <clears throat> Just as Brandon is the successor to the Exiles, you are the successor to the World Representatives. Both you are a pair, much like reflections in a mirror. Continue as you were, the experiment, the experiment that is this endless game has a long way to go yet. I would imagine Baylor to be the next to disappear from this Tokyo. He must retrieve his memories as a world representative from his sacred artifact before that happens. There are questions there. 
and yet it like there are questions and yet I feel it's kind of just I feel like there's kind of a bullshit answer for it and I'm not like I'd rather just let it go for now What's with these guys? There's still prisoners in here. Why are they trying to blow us up? We should split up and see if there's anyone who hasn't escaped yet. <laughs> All right, everybody out. Time to hightail it back to good old Ikebukuro. Wow, this place is crumbling fast. We gotta get out of here. Looks like Makan and the others are gone. I wonder if the warmonger's troops saw them off. Brandon. Uh, Shiro, take care of the rest. Wait for me here at Moritaka. I'll be right back. So I see that Tezcatlipoca has been defeated, and his accomplice, Baylor, is now a wanted man. The pact has been broken, and the ringleaders have been punished for it, one and all. How wonderful! <laughs> no, you're forgetting one important character. One important character. <clears throat> you're forgetting one of the important characters in this chapter of our story, Baylor. The world representative who runs the underground auction house and originally sent the troops to Pen Penitentia Academy. Tezcatlipoca's other accomplice, Mahakala Devaloka, the great black one. I knew it. I can't feel my ties to Sukiyomi. How could I have lost sight of. How could I have lost all sight of the world pillar? If Tsukiyomi is not dead, I can only think of one other possible alternative. He must have been swallowed up by the only thing in Tokyo capable of engulfing all night. Mahakaba's darkness. Finally! Mr. Mononobe? <laughs> so, you made it all the way here, Brandon. Thank goodness! What? Uh, what are you doing? Whoa! <laughs> Hurry, let's escape. Let's escape. Come with me, Mr. Mononobe. I can't. Stay back. Hurry up and run. I can't go with you. I can't leave this place. What do you mean? Hurry up! Let's go! How come this hasn't happened before? This isn't the first time we've touched. I see. Half of your body has become one with Salomonas. <laughs> I'm glad to have given you that ring then. Even without me, you'll be fine. Run, both of you. Mr. Mononobe, your your body. Yeah. 
Hook mention. Repeating self-sacrifice? No way! Sacred, I, my sacred artifacts lighting up like a torch! It's like it wants me to follow it! That exception's gotta be in there somewhere! <laughs> yeah, we finally made it here. This is where the memories of Ikebukuro, of the Ikebukuro gate are stored. The memories washed away from past loots by the great flood of time end up anywhere. They'll be here. There must be some hints to the battles from previous loots that we know nothing about. The whole damn place belongs in a museum! When was it even built? I wouldn't go around touching things if I were you. <laughs> this may look like an old ordinary stone, but it isn't. These cracks and craters, memories of previous loops war, look to me like look to me like a way to accumulate information. In much the same way as these book as the books in the old building at Shinjuku Academy are actually crystallized data. I'm sure that once you touch them, the shadows of those memories will come out to attack us, just like they did back there. Hmm. So these crumbling walls are the scars of a loop now past. Have you noticed something, Guildmaster? No, we were only thinking of the great flood of time and how many times it must have drowned this Tokyo. We wonder how many hundreds, if not thousands of years, it would have would span and calculate. Every time the every time the flow of time is reset, our bodies are restored and our memories erased. We wonder if after such a long time, our minds and bodies are perhaps worn down like these walls. The same goes for world pillars. They have been separated from their sacred artifacts, and their memories etched into those artifacts. Bodies and souls of those artifacts owners should not be wearing down, and yet... Surely the actual media used to record the loops cannot be subject to being rewound. That would defeat the purpose. Logically, just like the walls and ceilings of this labyrinth, it will accumulate damage and eventually wear down. Moreover, Consider for a moment the existence of the individual who started these loops, or someone who is observing their outcomes. If such a figure is indeed real, and that figure is immortal, and that figure is mortal, would they still be alive, safe and sound? God, you, you, you're hitting the nail on the head. <laughs> if anyone hasn't figured it out yet. <laughs> After hundreds upon thousands of years, they not waste away to nothing. Hmm. Operator backup plan D identified. No. <coughs> Oops, wrong character. Operator backup plan D identified. I have been waiting for you, Master. Ah, right. You've done good work. I'll take the data you have observed until now. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's pretty admirable of everyone to keep going without knowing all that. Master? Is something wrong? Hmm. Let me propose something to you. If you wanted to, if you wanted me to deactivate you, right here, right now, I would. You wouldn't feel any pain. You'd simply cease to exist. I have the authority to do this. I'm offering out of compassion. Mr. Mononobe, y your body. Before you, the man before you abandoned you and disappeared. Why do you still chase after him? Who are you? You're not my teacher. <laughs> I suppose I should introduce myself, Brent. You may call me Maakala, the world representative of Deva Loka. I am an ally of Tezcatlipoca and the others against whom you were just fighting. You see, I too desire a ruinous war which leaves none unscathed. Where is Mr. Mononobe? Do you really want that? If I leave this man's body, he truly will disappear. What? Why? This man foolishly discarded a sacred artifact and handed over his rule. Now he is nothing more than a hollow shell. Nothing but memories with nowhere to house them. Think of him as a ghost. One who will never be able to leave a battle zone. You mean, like I used to be? Don't tell me! He sacrificed himself for me! <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and even more foolishly, he erased every trace of his existence beforehand. Ah. <sighs> What the blazes is going on? That's what I want to know! What on earth is happening? Foolish, destructive honesty is precisely what I adore in it. Once the next loop, once the next loop begins, this man will be completely erased from this Tokyo. Erased? I won't let that happen. <laughs> How wonderful! An end in which everything is destroyed. And that is what I wish for. For it is only. In complete destruction, that <laughs> the world's salvation can be found. Because Kalapoka always lacked ambition. He strove for an eternal war when he wished, when he should have wished for a final war. <clears throat> a grand war that leaves nothing standing, that destroys even the memories that sp span across loops. All will begin with the first Yuga, and all will end with the last. I shall ensure it. Upon the name of Malakala, I vow to remake everything from scratch. Cre 
creation, preservation, and destruction. I will repeat this cycle as many times as need be. For my wish is that no one may break out of this cycle. Not on my watch. Hmm. No, I reject your proposal, Master. Why? Do you want your death to be more gruesome than it needs to be? Answer! I wish to choose my time of deactivation for myself. I have learned that one can choose one's own fate. Hmm. Who dies when? Who permits what? Who has to die? Things like that aren't for someone else to decide. This game is over. I won't let it loop again. I won't let it loop again. <coughs> oh God, God. I'll put an end to it. <laughs> How unfortunate. I fear you leave me no other option than war. It was inevitable. Inevitable. I hate that word. <laughs> I have known from the beginning that there could be no peace between us. Wait! Where are you taking him? There you are! Open all the other cells. We have to get out of here! <sighs> Mr. Mononobe! Damn it! Hmm. Well, let's head out. Let's head out then. Everything alright, Curran? Break ran away from me. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you. I was going to take him to the world representative of Tyrannon, but he told me he would choose his own path and disappear. Huh. Sorry to hear that. He's being dragged. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Greetings, my friends. How I have how I have missed you. Nice to meet you. As of today, I'll be your new trainee physician. You can call me Dr. Shinon. My last school kind of got destroyed, so I'll be here at Shinjuku Academy from now on. I can see many familiar faces already, but I look forward to getting to know those of you who I don't recognize. Hmm. It can't be! J Jacob? 
In the flesh. In the flesh. <laughs> I thought I might pay my old guild a visit. I found myself missing your voice, you see. I kind of know, but like, good God, it's going it's gonna to get even heavier from here. I'm glad I've managed to bear through that. Now for the chapter that everybody loves. <laughs> Everyone loves chapter 11.